Yes, hello. So, a little spooky Halloween um, special. Right, so I'm going to start with some of the type of books I may have read um, as a kid for Halloween. Um, to be honest, I'll be reading these any time of the year, but in particular, you know, it's Halloween, you might think, oh, I really want to read something spooky. Here's what I would have gone for. So, Goosebumps. Uh, we got This one is a Goosebumps Series 2000, and it's clearly very Halloween-y. It's got pumpkins in it. Can't really get more Halloween in that, and it even says Halloween, Headless Halloween. That's a pretty spooky uh, drawing there. I like that. I think that's their head, basically. Um, they aren't your friends. This isn't a party. This is a nightmare. Yes, yeah, so the Goosebumps Series 2000 was a lot of fun, done for the new millennium. Uh, and you can see from the back... Um, what it's about, nice description of what's sort of going on there, 2,000 times the scare, yeah, the, uh, I remember really loving this and thinking it was a lot of fun, also keeping with Goosebumps, this edition was actually done just after the first movie, um, it's got that nice sort of pulpy design on it which I like, classic sort of 50s movie style, um, yeah, this is a shock on Shock Street. Um, a good one to read um, for Halloween because it's about some fans of horror films and a theme park that's um, devoted to a particular set of fictional horror films that exist in the Goosebumps universe called Shock Street. Good one. And then this is, I've got lots of Goosebumps books, so I just picked a selection of what's to hand. But if you want to read a classic one, um, the Ghost Next Door, so I think it's about 993, 992, 993 was published. Um, yeah, um, very good um, story. That's Hannah on the front, that's a fire, because fire and Hannah are key parts of the story. Um, Goosebumps are known for their twist. This has a really good twist. I remember as a child, I didn't see it coming. Maybe you would, maybe you wouldn't. Um, maybe you've already read this book and you really like it, because it is, of course, famous. Um, yeah. Um, also, one of the better TV adaptations of the stories as well in the original series of Goosebumps. Yeah, um, Ghost Next Door, classic in the Goosebumps world. And then I also got into Shivers, so especially I think once I'd read all the available Goosebumps, I found Shivers, and I also thought these were well written by M.D. Spencer. Really fun stories, um, Beware the Bog Girl. Um, so this is about a scary bog girl, basically, like it says. Um, yeah, um, these are good. Um, you can read them as kids and there's there's scary stuff in them, but they're not too scary. No, nothing too horror -y, but also scary, if you know what I mean. A bit like Doctor Who, I guess. Um, yeah, and they I like this series of shivers. I thought they were good. But yeah, um, they're good. And also, I pretty much find I could really pick one of these up, read them as an adult and still enjoy them. Obviously, partly it's a nostalgia of them reading them originally, but also it's just because they're such they're fun stories and the way they're written is just in such an entertaining way. Um, as I got a bit older and a teenager, I started to read some of the point of horror. And these are a classic teen fiction. You may well be familiar with the serious point horror. Now, R.L. Stein of Goosebumps fame did write um, quite a few of these. But I've picked The Window by Carol Ellis. Um, so, she's seen the killer. Has the killer seen her? And yeah, as you can see from the blurb, it's very rear window. I mean, this book was about 992, 993 again. The rear window film would definitely have been out by then, definitely. Probably a few of the remakes as well would have been out at that point. I remember there was one with Christopher Reeve, I think, in the early 90s. That would have probably been out. Um, anyway, yeah, it is quite rear window-like where she's she may have spotted a murder from watching through her cabin window. Um, yeah, they may well have been inspired by that particular film. It's definitely possible. Um, so that's a good one if you're looking for some teen fiction. Um, and then this is a classic sort of point horror setup. Um, April Falls. This one's by a different author. Um, it's no joke. It's murder. Yeah. Um, some teens get caught up in an accident. Um, but it seems that somebody may have witnessed what happened after you know the others just pretend it didn't happen and forget about it. One of the characters isn't able to, and she becomes haunted by it, with someone playing pranks. Um, but of course, this is a horror, so the pranks, pranks are going to be extra nasty. So yeah, I remember really like reading those two point horror as a teenager, thinking they're good. Every so often, I really read 
this series as well, so I may go back to those two. Now, onto something I'm currently reading, which is the house that horror built. So I've just started this, so I don't know how it's gonna sort of go, but the premise is really, really good. Um, long story short, well, it fits into the horror, haunted horror genre, which I really like. Um, yeah, and I haven't read anything by Christina Henry, but um, based on the writing, I think I'm going to be looking at, looking for more, definitely. Um, yeah, so um, there's this, when the book begins, and there's not going to be any spoilers because I've just started, but I can say when the book begins, we learn about this child who ends up really liking horror films, gets obsessed with horror films, is a big fan. Now, fast forward to when she's older, she becomes a cleaner who works for one of the famous horror film directors that she really liked their work from. Um, but he's been caught up in a lot of tragedy and um, some kind of mystery, some kind of scandal. Um, and one day when she's cleaning at the house, she hears noises. It seems like somebody trying to ask for help behind one of the rooms and it all kicks off from there. So yeah, looking forward to reading the rest of this. I got this as a present, as a gift, so that's really good. And um, from a family member. And yeah, I'm looking forward to see where the story goes. I like the author's style of writing, so I think I'm going to want to read more from the author, definitely. And this is something I want to read again. I haven't read it for a while, but it's Nora Lofts, The Haunting of Gad's Hill. I believe this came out in the 70s, uh, and I got it last year. Yeah, yeah, oh, 1978. Yeah, it's a bit of a classic. I do believe it's regarded as a classic now. Um, yeah, so if you're looking for, um, you like your haunted buildings like me, um, I would definitely recommend this one. Oh, look, £1.25. I don't get any books for that for you now. And then James Herbert. So over the last couple of years, got into reading James Herbert. This is The Secret of Creekley Hall. Now, I haven't yet read this, but I'm really looking forward to. Um, obviously, again, it's about a building that's haunted or has at least some secrets. It's a hall this time, though. It's a little posher. The number one chiller writer. Mm. And um, so it's one ninety nine. but I actually got it for 50p. Um, yeah, um, this is a BBC adaptation. Sorry, they did a BBC adaptation with Sir Aaron Jones, as you can see on the front. I'm trying to hunt that down. I want to watch it, but first I want to read the book, and I haven't read the book yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so once I've read it, I'll then watch the adaptation and probably decide the book is much better. So it shows you how it goes, but you know, you can still get something out of the adaptations, even if they're not as good as the books. We'll see. Um, yeah, so looking forward to that. Now this book I got, I can't even remember where I got it from. Probably a charity shop or car boot sale. But yeah, highly recommend it. This is the sequel. I need to get the first one. Ghost movies. So more classics of the supernatural. Basically, this contains stories that in some form have been adapted either to TV or to film. And you've got some big authors here. You've got Dean Koontz, M.R. James, George A. Romeo even. So you've got like uh, directors, writers, mix. Leon Garfield. I think there's some more. Oh, no, it just says the same. Um... Oh, um, yeah, Al Algernon Blackwood, whose work I wasn't so familiar with before I got this book. Susan Hill, of course, wrote The Woman in Black, which is another good one to read for Halloween, a classic. I need to find my copy of that. I do have one somewhere. Um, yes, so this is really good. I, I, I'm i always interested in that TV adaptations. Um, and, yeah, so this is just a selection of works that have in some form been adapted um to tv obviously this is 1996 so uh, uh it'll be about adaptations to that point um it, oh it's got the woman in black that is what it's got in susan hill so i own that separately but we've also got uh, a version of it here um yes i recommend this it's a it's a good little find if you're interested in the both movies and tv uh adaptations of stories and then, yeah, this version where they've sort of been adapted, ad adapted back to book again. Um, yeah, right. And then lastly, again, this was a gift that I got. And it's a really good version of the Frankenstein story. So let's be honest, Frankenstein and Dracula are probably the two greatest horror books and probably the two best books to read for Halloween. Um, yeah, classic, read them many times, really love them. 
and it's really good when you get other adaptations that sort of offer a fresh perspective of a classic story and this one is done really well so say it was a gift yep i've read this a couple of times now and really enjoyed it so this is frankenstein the graphic novel um it says the full story in quick modern english for a fast-paced read so although obviously it's a more condensed version i think it does a really good job of telling hitting all the right emotional points hitting all the right action and storytelling and also and i guess this is also key for a comic book a graphic novel and what a graphic novel can offer whereas um traditional written uh fiction can't is the drawings the illustrations and that's something extra to enjoy and as you can see it's got really good artwork so yeah really enjoyed it so really recommend this oh and also at the back it's got some interesting behind the scenes um you've got well behind the scenes of the comic book um but also a nice bit of history about mary shelley and the um frankenstein story um so yeah highly recommend this if you're looking for an a different adaptation and a unique adaptation of the absolute classic Frankenstein story. So I hope you like this little video. But a look, a little look at some of my favourite um, horror books. Some that I'm reading now, some that I will be reading soon. And I will see you in the next video.